The history of labyrinths is a lot more fascinating than you'd imagine. These captivating structures, far older and more enchanting than the traditional mazes we all know, have been weaving their way through human history for over 4,000 years, and they're found sprinkled across the globe in different shapes and sizes. For starters, let's make sure we're using the terminology correctly. A maze and a labyrinth are two distinct structures often confused with each other. The primary difference lies in their design and purpose. A maze is a complex network of interconnected pathways, featuring multiple intersections, dead ends, and choices, making it challenging to find the correct route from the entrance to the exit. Mazes are created to perplex and confuse participants, often requiring trial and error to solve. On the other hand, a labyrinth is a single, non-branching path that leads from the entrance to the center and then back out. Unlike a maze, there are no intersections or dead ends in a labyrinth. The path may twist and turn, creating a winding journey, but it is continuous, meaning it has only one route to the center and one route back out. Labyrinths serve meditative, spiritual, or calming purposes, and are often found in various cultures and religious traditions. Now, let's get back to history. Sure, those hedge mazes we all know, like the one in Hampton Court, are cool. But did you know they're actually just youngsters in the timeline of mazes? They started popping up in the gardens of the rich and royal folks in Europe only about 600 years ago. On the other hand, labyrinths, with their single twisted meandering path from the start to the finish, have been around for millennia. Right from the ancient times to our fast-paced modern age, these intricate patterns have been inscribed on rocks, painted on walls, or simply traced in the dirt under our feet. They've been a source of amusement, a tool for introspection, and a symbol of spiritual journey. The common classical and medieval designs of labyrinths are crowd favorites, largely for their aesthetic balance of complexity and compactness. Labyrinths don't really play mind games with you. There are no forks in the path to confusion. Instead, you're invited to simply step in and trust the path to guide you to your goal. Let's take a step back in time to look at the early versions of labyrinths. Neolithic and Bronze Age folks etched these symbols on rocks and pottery, although pinpointing their exact age can be a bit tricky. Similar designs were found on ancient Cretan coins, signifying the famed Labyrinth of Gnosis. If that doesn't sound familiar, know that it's connected to a famous ancient tale from Greek mythology, the myth of the Minotaur. It centers around King Minos of Crete and a monstrous creature with a human body and a bull's head. It begins with a terrible curse that affected Minos and his kingdom after he angered Poseidon, the powerful spirit of the sea. Eh, you don't want to do that. In his wrath, Poseidon introduced into Minos' household a monstrous creature, half-human, half-bull, known as the Minotaur. Fearing the beast's uncontrollable and savage nature, Minos commissioned the brilliant architect Daedalus to design and construct an intricate labyrinth beneath his palace in Nosos to imprison the Minotaur. To ensure the Minotaur remained fed, Minos imposed a dreadful tribute on the city of Athens. The third time this tribute was due, the Athenian hero Theseus decided to take matters into his own hands. He volunteered as one of the tributes and sailed to Crete. Upon arriving in Crete, he was given a crucial device, a magical thread that he could unravel while navigating the labyrinth, ensuring he could find his way back after confronting the Minotaur. In the heart of the labyrinth, Theseus encountered the terrifying creature and, using his wit and strength, managed to defeat it. Following the thread, he safely made his way out of the maze and fled. But was this famous labyrinth real? It might have been. Picture this, an expansive maze of underground tunnels, stretching on for nearly three miles beneath a stone quarry. This is not just any stone quarry. It's situated on the picturesque Greek island of Crete. Some folks are beginning to think this may have been the real spot for the legendary labyrinth. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, I don't. Anyway, what about the Minoan palace at Nosos? That place, just 20 miles away, has, for the longest time, been pegged as the home of the labyrinth, thanks to some pretty influential voices. For more than a century, ever since the British archaeologist Arthur Evans started digging around Nosos, this has been the accepted narrative. Mr. Evans was pretty successful in selling this idea to the world. 
However, some other scholars are beginning to view this new location as a potentially equally valid spot for the mythical maze. And you've got to admit, the complex network of interlocking tunnels, including larger spaces, does give off a pretty strong labyrinth vibe. However, since the rediscovery of Nosos in the late 19th century, this site has been largely ignored by those seeking out the mythical maze. It was even used as a storage place at one point in history. Of course, we're slipping past the more important question – well, I think so – of whether there actually was a creature which was part man and part bull. Now, I think it's possible, especially since I run into folks all the time who are full of bull. Legends aside, if we fast forward to the Roman Empire, we'll find labyrinths decorating mosaic floors, providing a playground for children, or serving as a training ground for knights to hone their skills. In the medieval era, labyrinth designs became even more intricate, reflecting the complex philosophical and spiritual views of the time. These were engraved in manuscripts or elegantly laid out in marble and tiles on floors for important constructions. The Chart Cathedral Labyrinth built in the early 13th century, still welcomes visitors today. From the late medieval period, labyrinths started popping up on village greens and hilltops in Britain and Germany. Even Shakespeare mentioned them in a Midsummer Night's Dream. These labyrinths, where villagers danced during rustic festivities, are now rare, with only a few remaining in England and Germany. Similarly, rock labyrinths on remote Scandinavian islands, tied to the superstitious practices of medieval folk, add another fascinating chapter to our labyrinthine history. The story gets even more intriguing when we find labyrinths in places like India, Sumatra, Java, and even among the rock art of the American Southwest. The questions of how and when these patterns reach these far-flung locations are still enigmas. By the 19th century, people had spread labyrinths and mazes to all corners of the world and they evolved to become the fun, family-oriented attractions we know today. In the late 20th century, labyrinths experienced a resurgence as a new generation began to appreciate their historic and spiritual significance. These age-old designs, with their twisty paths inevitably leading to a central goal, invite us for both fun exploration and deep contemplation. As for their purpose, back in the day, labyrinths had some pretty interesting uses. They might have been used as traps for those nasty spirits that folks didn't want hanging around, or maybe as dance floors for special ceremonies. Researchers also found that labyrinths could have many meanings, like a roadmap to a revered ancestor's home, or even a symbolic representation of that ancestor. They found that for some indigenous communities, a labyrinth was a really important symbol, like a lucky charm. Labyrinths can also represent a spiritual journey. As folks walk the winding paths, they might feel like they're getting closer to some sort of enlightenment. Lately, lots of labyrinths have been popping up in places like hospitals and parks. They're often used as a sort of meditative tool. As you wander around, you lose yourself in the twists and turns, forgetting about the outside world, and it helps to quiet down all the noise in your head. Switching gears a bit, labyrinths and mazes have also found a home in the world of video games. Take the 1994 game Marathon, for instance. It was packed with all these maze-like passages that players had to find their way through. Labyrinths don't just stop at video games, they've inspired a bunch of films, games, and music too. A pretty avant-garde film called In the Labyrinth uses a symbolic modern labyrinth as a metaphor for the search for meaning. There's also a highly praised film called Pan's Labyrinth, which leans heavily on its symbolism. 